grace How sweet the sound What a So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. Don't wait another day. I hope you found those opening words inspiring. Not only do they remind us of the worldwide church of which we are all a part against the backdrop of John Newton's wonderful words, but also they lead into one of our two Bible readings today, where Paul states, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, welcome everyone to our service from St Nicholas Church this morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Whether you are with us every week or just occasionally, you are truly welcome. It is good that you can join us today 
I'm Alan Jenkins. I'm rector at St Nicholas Church and it's my privilege to lead us through this service today. But as always, I won't be alone. I'll be joined by some of our church family today by Nick and Janet, who will be bringing our Bible readings, Chris, who will be leading us in our prayers, and also Jill, who is our preacher. And as ever, our grateful thanks to the good number who work behind the scenes making all of this possible. And so as we turn to prayer, I now invite you to join with me in saying the words of our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then as we continue in prayer, I invite you to join in our prayer of confession. In doing so, we acknowledge that all of us get things wrong in what we think and say and do. But the good news of the Gospel is that when we come before God and say sorry, He is more than ready to forgive us. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. I invite you to join with us in singing our first hymn now, the hymn Be Still for the Presence of of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Where is God? Some people may ask. Answer, everywhere, not least in those places where his people meet. Our hymn will be followed by the first of our two Bible readings.
first reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's no denying it, is there? To have witnessed Jesus walking on the water would have been truly phenomenal. No wonder those who were in the boat were moved to worship Jesus and to recognise that he truly was the Son of God. Well, I wonder what has been good news for you over these past four months. Yes, I know, they've also been very difficult months for everyone. But amidst the anxiety and the frustration and the sadness, there have been some good news moments too. I'm very grateful to those in our church fellowship who have shared with me their good news moments. Thank you very much, all of you. Although not in the form of a recorded film, Valerie Lambert wanted us to know that she really appreciated being able to see the spring developing as she went on her walks. And she was so encouraged to see the unpolluted skies as cars were only used minimally and no aeroplanes, of course. Also, of course, the wonderful community spirit in Bookham, which was so encouraging. And Deborah Gallagher wanted us to hear the encouraging story about what happened when her now son-in-law went into the supermarket to do some shopping a few days prior to his wedding. He happened to mention at the checkout he was getting married. The checkout lady summoned the manager and he was true duly presented with a dozen red roses for his bride-to-be. Meanwhile, in the form of a recorded film, here are some other people telling us what good news there has been for them over these last few months. We'll listen to what they had to say, followed by our second Bible reading, which concludes with that wonderful affirmation, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I have been touched by the kindness of friends and particularly by the children of friends, the younger generation, to help us when they know we're in lockdown for a long time. I've been touched over the last four months by the love of my family and the friendship that's been all from all over the world, and not least of all our neighbourliness from our street, with also the final challenges of a good hobby. What's encouraged me about the last four months is how we've adapted to different ways of doing things. And despite the lack of physical connection, how relationships have actually deepened through more phone calls, Zoom coffee mornings and socially distanced walks in the countryside. I loved the awesome silence. No traffic noise, no building work, no aeroplanes, just God's nature joyous bird song, twitching insects, and the gentle flutter of the breeze rustling through the trees. 
Hi, it's Susie here. Um, I'm just grateful for so many things in the last four months, um, including having our three girls back home and all being together as a family. Um, for the beautiful countryside we have had around here to do our walks in. Um, also very grateful for the furlough scheme and also grateful to have my job back and to be back at work here at Polston. I've been encouraged to lead a Bible study in my house group. Thank you so much and farewell Sue Lawrence. Hi Sue here. What's my good news during lockdown? Well I have plenty of time to catch up on reading more than I normally do and I really enjoyed one particular book that I got my hands on. It's called God's Dangerous Book. It's a history of that radical book that is the Bible. Very accessible and will tell you all sorts of things about how the Bible came into being and how you come to be reading the translations that you read today. So I recommend it. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 15. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them, but the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. A scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you are here with us. Open our hearts to hear your voice as we explore your word together. Amen. Now, our Bible reading today from Romans 10, chapter, uh, verses 5 to 15, has two big takeaway points, and they are both linked. Point number one is that salvation is for everyone. There's no difference between Jews or Gentiles, and everyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. And point number two is about the importance of mission and evangelism, because people can't call on the Lord if they've never heard the gospel. Now Paul has got two audiences in the church in Rome. There are converted pagans and converted Jews. And there's always been a tension between the two, because for pagans and Gentiles, the gospel really was good news, because if they believed in their hearts that Jesus died for them and rose again, and they confessed it with their lips, they were saved and received eternal life. How wonderful after a lifetime of worshipping stone deities. But some Jews didn't see salvation in quite the same way. They'd been brought up with the rather complex requirements and observances of Mosaic law. And they felt that eternal life depended on how well they observed these rules. They found it very difficult to give that up and just believing and confessing your faith, it didn't sound like enough. Paul points out to the Jews that there's a bit of a problem with their approach because they were putting all the emphasis on their own actions to earn them eternal life and there was no emphasis on God's saving grace. 
So Paul reminds them that the Old Testament texts don't just say, obey the rules and you'll be in. They also require you to love your God with all your heart and all your soul. He also reminds them that the scripture, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, is not something new. It's actually from the Old Testament, from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. So having said that, Paul launches into his second point about mission. Because while there's nothing that we can do to achieve our salvation, it's something God does for us, there's plenty that we can do to make sure that everyone has a chance to hear the gospel and decide whether they believe. In verses 14 and 15, Paul says, How then can they call on the one they've not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Well, there are lots of active verbs in those two sentences. Paul is telling us we can't just be passive when it comes to sharing our faith. Now, I wonder how those active verbs make you feel. Sending, preaching to people so that they can hear and believe. Does it conjure up visions of Billy Graham rallies? Or those who preach on the high street with a billboard saying the end is nigh? Very often we're happy to come to church but less comfortable about mission and evangelism because we worry that we may not know the answer to people's questions. We don't want to be thought of as Bible bashers. Maybe we just think we're too old. But Paul isn't telling us here how to evangelise, only that we need to do it. In his day, evangelism really did mean going into the marketplace and preaching a sermon. But how does evangelism look for us in Bookham today? Well, I had a look on the internet for some top tips in evangelism. Some of them are quite big, but others are very small things that anybody could do. So the first tip, and this is the big one, get your life in order. Because our lives, personally and in our church communities, are one of the best evangelistic tools that we've got. Jesus said, love one another, and by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. If we're not walking closely with God and we're not praying or asking for his guidance, we're not going to be a witness to others. People hate hypocrisy, but they notice when people are genuine and they are walking the talk. So if you feel your life is somewhat in order, the next step is to pray about sharing your faith and ask God to guide you, see where he takes you. So one tip is think about doing a bit of volunteering, however small, because this is where you can meet people, you can serve them and chat. It could be in any of the church activities that we run, from toddler group through to Tuesday cafe, meeting place, food projects, and there are charities, other charities that we work with in the village and beyond. Start communicating your faith in a small way. If you like social media, there are lots of designed Bible verses and inspiring sayings that you can post on Twitter or Facebook. And amusing church-related cartoons are very good too. Our rector Alan has been sharing these in his emails, you might have noticed. And what about cards and stationery, bookmarks and stickers with encouraging words or Bible verses? Is there anything in your home, in the hallway or the lounge, that would tell a visitor about your faith? A book, um, a, fr a framed blessing, a mug? I have to confess, I've got nothing in my house, and that's something I'm going to put right very soon. Many of you know Chris Bridges from our congregation, and you may have noticed that she has, on the front of her bike, um, a nodding Jesus figure on a spring. 
You used to get nodding dogs for the back of your car. Well, now you can get nodding Jesuses and Popes. And I asked Chris if it was a good conversation starter. And she said, yes, absolutely. People recognise the nodding figure on the bike before they recognise that it's her riding towards them. She's had some very good conversations with people, especially when she takes the bike in to Leatherhead Bike Shop to ask for a repair. Now, the nodding Jesus may not be your cup of tea, you know, I would quite understand, but you get the point that something small can be a really good conversation starter. COVID-19 has impacted us all in different ways, but it is making people review their priorities and look for deeper meaning in life. Sharing our faith is not optional for Christians. There's an old African proverb that sums this up. In the desert, there is one crime that is worse than murder, and that is to know where there is water and not to tell. So I'd like to end today with um, a video presentation. It's about sharing your faith and it's called Carriers and I hope you find it uplifting. Thank you to Jill for encouraging and challenging us so wonderfully this morning and for that all important reminder that although there is something that we can't do, namely earn our salvation, there is something we can do, namely tell others. Jill, as many of you know, is currently training for ordination in the Church of England. She has completed year one and is about to move into year two. We asked Wendy Hall who is a member of Jill's parish support group, to find out how she's getting on. So hi Jill, how are hi. you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Well, it's great to be able to chat with you this morning. Um, we know you're in the midst of your course, and, and can you tell us in more t detail what you're training for? Yes, I am training on the local ministry programme of the Diocese of Guildford, we call it LNP for short, and it's a three-year programme, and at the end of it, I will be an ordained minister of the Church of England. Mm -hmm. Lovely, and so how does the course work? Well, it's part-time for three years, and I've just finished the first year, <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I go to college on a Monday evening, like, like a student, uh, and we have a class of about seven others. And then I do a lot of reading myself, which is what uh, this is. And um, 
at the same time, I'm doing my full-time job with, uh, it's a Christian-based based charity called Oasis. So um, I'm, I've got that all to juggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. So what sort of things are you studying? Well, it's amazing. So we study, obviously, uh, the Bible. We're looking at different ways of worshipping. And we've been to um, a synagogue, a Buddhist temple. And we've watched videos of different kinds of worship. I was impressed by Gaelic psalm singing in the Hebrides because they sing, um, they make it up as they, as they sing along. So Peter Lutton might have something to say about that. But it's all <laughs> sorts of uh, wonderful input we're getting. Uh, we study hermeneutics, homiletics, theoretical, theoretical reflection, all sorts of long words, and I love it. So it's quite full on, Jill. So yes. tell us. Tell us how, as a congregation, we can support you. Well, I do get some support already uh, from Alan, our incumbent, and the ministry team, who are all very helpful to me. Um, I have something called the Parish Support Group, and we meet sort of every term, and uh, that's a group of about six, again, who are very supportive. And for anybody else who really wants to help me, please listen to my next three sermons because they will be examined and marked and will be part of the course. So all your feedback is gratefully received. Oh, well, thank you, Jill. Thanks very much for sharing all this with us. Um, and I know that everyone will want to join with me in wishing you God's richest blessings as you continue in your studies. Uh, and we'll pray that you also, through your future role as a minister for Christ, will be a blessing to many, many people. That's wonderful. Thank you. Let's turn now to a time of prayer. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we come before you as your people. We call upon your holy name. Listen to our cries and answer our prayers, O Lord. You, Lord, are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, creator of the cosmos. Look upon this small blue dot, our planet, your gift of abundance and life to humanity. We failed in our stewardship in so many ways, and we cry out for your mercy and your forgiveness. We live before you, those who suffer for the things we have done and for the things we failed to do. As Japan remembers Hiroshima and Nagasaki 75 years on, we lift you all who suffer from human conflict, cruelty and tyranny. As the people of Beirut suffer from that recent massive explosion, we lift you all who suffer from the negligence and corruption of those in authority. As the world stumbles into climate change and environmental decline, we lift you all those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened by greed and exploitation. We pray especially for all those working for peace, for justice, and for the health of our planet. Redeemer God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you know what it is to be a human. You came to bring freedom from oppression and life to your people. We pray for those named in our new sheet and those known to us who struggle with ill health, addiction, broken relationships, insecurity, grief, or distress. We thank you for all who seek to bring hope and comfort in your name. Today we pray especially for the work of the meeting place here in Bookham, as it continues to support around 170 families through the community fridge. Thank you that their coffee shop has successfully reopened and that the Language Hub has managed to continue via Zoom. We pray 
for their current organisational work to establish an Anna chaplaincy here in Bookham. Locally, we also pray for the residents of Commonside and the Common, and thank you for all the benefits that the Common brings to our community. God of healing and life, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, God in us, sharing your love and power in our lives. We lift you all who seek to share your love in the lives of our neighbours. We thank you for our own ministry team, and especially today we prepare for Jill as she continues her training. Sustain, protect and guide each one, we pray. We also thank you for the work of the Mothers' Union, both globally and in our community, as today they celebrate their founder, Mary Sumner. And within our own church, we thank you for the faithful people who are temporarily stood down from chalice and assistant and server duties, that they might find special blessing in our services of worship. We thank you for the work to improve the commitment step of our church development plan led by Sue Lawrence and John Heiner. We pray that this work will bear fruit in the lives of many people brought into fellowship with you. Spirit of the living God, may you guide us to grow in numbers and in faith and direct us to worship in spirit and in truth. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're nearly at the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Please remember, if there is any matter for which you would like prayer, we're willing to pray for you. Please just complete the simple form on our website or email the address at the end of this service to let us know. We are always grateful to those who give financially to support the work of St Nicholas and if you don't do so already and you would like to give, again, details and a form to enable you to do that are on our website. Meanwhile, do remember that for any who would like to meet today, we are once again holding our Zoom coffee after this service at 11.15 and details about how to join that were in my weekly email sent out last Thursday. And so to our final hymn, which is entirely fitting given the theme of our service today, go forth and tell God's saving news to all the nations take.
final prayer. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.